220. Okay, so I started at 225. Um, my lowest fasted weigh in so far was 213.6. Um, but that was after a pretty hard evening training session, so I might have been a little dehydrated for the morning. Um, so yeah. 220.6. Good. Three pounds. I have no idea. Sweat test. Sweat test. So this little patch is, and if you want to explain it, but this little patch is going to be put in a vial and it's going to go into a lab and then they're going to test the sodium concentration of his sweat loss. Exciting stuff. This is a real next level. Real deal holy field. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Everything that we just did, I just love that stuff. Like it's, it's been awesome to get back to like true athletic training, athletic warm-ups. Like that was what I did for so long. Um, you know, my goal for the longest time was to be a collegiate soccer player. So like stuff like that was what I did all the time. So getting back to that, especially in a group setting, you know, having Dom and having him here to do it alongside has been awesome. Cause it's like we're a support system for each other. Also, we push each other hard. You know, but going through the paces together, even being in here today, this is our first indoor ride together. Normally we do this at home. So just having the opportunity to do this together, learn. You know, even like the testing that we're doing, I did a lot of this testing in college, but I haven't done it since. So just getting all this data is super, super cool to me. It's also something I didn't expect, um, how analytical the sport is. You know, and, and coaching bodybuilders, there's not a lot of analytics to it. It's a lot, it goes off a of feel, and then you're depending on somebody else for their effort, you know, and just hoping that they're following and executing as you intend based off you know, the communication between you. So having all these analytics here to really know and track has just been a really cool thing for me. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get into today and just show you guys the process of everything we're doing. Round round one done. So sixteen ounces plus thirty three ounces is essentially fifty ounces. Is how much you lose per hour. Two eighteen point two. Two eighteen point two. What did you start with? Two twenty point six. Two twenty point six. And then fluids consumed? 24 ounces. That's 2.4. The sweat loss is higher. Okay, so we just did a sweat test, and what that sweat test calculates is the amount of sodium loss per hour. Um, so we were just on the bike per hour, and then based off of that rate of sodium, let's say if I, if I lose two pounds on a bike ride, but I lose four pounds in an hour on a run, then I'm gonna need to multiply that, that loss on the bike by two to get to what I need to consume on the run. So then I'll just have to put a, a larger titration of sodium in my drinks for the run and account for all that. And what, what this is really all building up to is race day 
having your nutrition pre-planned for the three, five, seven, nine hours or whatever you're out, which is there's a lot of calculation that goes into it. So it's a lot more than just like have a Gatorade and take off and run. You can try that, but you're, you're probably gonna have some pain along the way. You're gonna be cramping more. It's all about replenishing as much as you can so that way you can continue to put your, keep your output as high as possible. So the number one question is when should we do this? And I would say at least once a week because we're reinforcing good uh, running mechanics. When we start doing running workouts, you want to do it, you'll do a warm up 15 minutes, 20 minutes, then you would do running drills, and then you'll do the workout. So for sure, you go through this whole routine before any workout that we do. Why we weren't doing this, that's for sure. touch your hamstrings and what it will signal is how long we leave our back foot on the ground when we shouldn't and that's how we increase our cadence and that is also the muscle that we use to pull our leg through not up so if you're having hip issues we typically run and we think about bringing our knees up when in reality is you should actually just be pulling our leg through and that's just all hamstring and not hip flexor okay and then uh, if this foot is on the ground too long, the more time you spend on the ground, the more likely we are actually to get injured. And so it's all about being as light on our feet as possible. Like the impact uh, of touch go, touch go. Like you're supposed to be pushing, every time she touches your leg, that's when your hamstring's supposed to be moving forward. Okay. There was a lot of overstriding um, for one. Um, but yeah, let's look at video inside together. And your glute is the fire. So, uh, yeah, let's go over there. I can't see. Oh, no. <laughs> Babe, these have to be better than the gross ass stuff that she brought. What? She has the same kind of oats, but they're like good. Wait, I ordered one. What are they called? Uh, are they one something? I have yeah. bought them on Amazon. They taste like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Did you use Lobby or Rain Yes. Did you use Lobby or Rain Home yet? Yes. What was the conclusion of yours? So I just need to work on landing like midfoot strike on the on my big toe and have it underneath my hip to get my glute to contract. The biggest issue that I've had so far, um, and we can go into more detail about this in later videos, but I have like a, a calf issue, a nerve issue on my left side, and because of that, I'm overcompensating on my right side, so I have like a lot of shin pain right here, uh, which is why I'm wearing these awesome sleeves. But I can work with that by fixing where I'm landing on the ground and then just propel myself forward from there. So it's just gonna be a learning process. Um, keeping my foot underneath me and then landing heel strike here, which is gonna contract my glute and then should take that pain off the lower half of the leg. So I'm like, basically what's happening is I'm, you're supposed to land your feet underneath your body and I'm landing too far in front of my body with like a stride. And what it's doing is it's not letting me use my glutes to push my feet and it's also causing a ton of like tension in like my basically like sh kind of like my shin splint area but it's kind of like my posterior tibialis but it's like i've had a lot of pain there so i think right now i just have to kind of relearn how to run the right way and start over but hopefully it'll be better yeah like the way it digests though, so I'm like not even complaining about it, but I get roasted on Instagram for drinking it. These like health freaks message me and they're like, I can't fucking believe you're so healthy and you drink that shit with all that, I'm like lady, please, you're probably like, do mushrooms and fucking heroin on the weekends, relax. Like, these people are so rude. It's crazy. Is it that bad for you? I mean, don't all the athletes drink it? Well, it's like got dyes in it. Shit. But yeah. yeah. But you're also metabolizing things so fast when you're doing this, it doesn't really yeah. matter. Okay, so just swim easy. Uh, 200. Here in back, it's 50. Full time, 100. You want 100? Take your time. 200. Just run Oh, I should probably start my watch because I never do that. And just let it run. Don't touch it. Bro, I never do. Okay. Am, am I supposed to? <laughs> <laughs> no, <don't be> <laughs> <laughs> it's already better than you guys. Okay. 
Okay, so one of the things that we're continuing to learn about is there's a lot of different gear. And we've, Dom and I have both actually used swim pants that actually help you stay afloat. And one of the biggest struggles that I'm having in the pool right now is with the muscle that I have is staying afloat. So today, Natasha said that she wouldn't be doing me a true service as a coach if she didn't see me in just a regular pair of what's called jammers. So no additional aid in terms of floating. Um, and obviously I'm sinking way worse. So this is one of those things where I'm gonna have to kind of go backtrack and, and learn how to keep my body afloat. I think some of this is also gonna be having to come so down to lose to lose muscle, yeah. Um, so it's hard because I like the pants help us stay up. Um, and then when I, when I take them off and when I use real jammers, then I just sink. So I'm having to learn to, to really pull my spine in adjust my kick to keep my body up. My stomach into my spine, not my spine in. You guys get it. Push off the wall. Okay. As soon as you push off the wall, your body's gonna keep that great tension. But I want you to push off the wall, push up. Okay. Keep kicking and see how long you can hold the position by your head down and your belly in, and then your hands down, hands to the side. Okay? So go as long as I can on top of the water. Correct, yeah. And then we just stop and we'll come back. Okay, okay. but that, that push off is gonna solidify that good position. Up and out. Right. Is that supposed to happen? That's what the cat said. Like, my cat's over Like, as you're rotating your body, your hips should just be making your legs flop. Like, you should not be, you should not be trying to move your lower body at all. It should just be like a fluid, like, wavy motion. And it shows you that you don't need it because I have a buoy in between my legs right now. I'm not even using my legs and I'm swimming fine. It is all upper body. So just that shows you don't need your legs. So just like get your up your upper body in motion, go with the flow, go fluid, and just kind of let your legs just, the fin should grab the water and just kind of take your legs. Good. So yesterday we did like all above water stuff. So like my stroke going into the water, um, everything literally like from surface up. And now she's correcting my form underwater. So like the way I'm kind of going, attacking under and then bending my elbow and then pulling with my lat to get like the most efficiency out of my stroke. Um, so it's, it's like putting little pieces together. But if you did all this shit at once, you'd never be able to do it. It's just too much to do at once. in my head like I just like yeah I don't think it's mental I mean because I've been calm this whole time and she told me to speed up my stroke and then when I get back here it's up to 175 yeah maybe yeah yeah can we do like fence like just normal the fence on, yeah, let's see again. Yeah. and just like I just want to like try to put it all together yeah Thank you. 
All right, guys, so that is it for day two. Um, I definitely am feeling a lot more confident. I think one of my biggest, like, crutches or handicaps at this point was knowing that I was not fully swimming correctly with the right shorts on. Um, so I feel like we made some ground there today. And then also the catch on the bottom and being more aggressive through the catch was, was helpful. Um, again, it's just been awesome having Natasha here and uh, just get helping us fast track this as much as possible. And also, like I said, getting going, you know, starting the bike, like just getting back to like true athleticism and, and having direction and having purpose in the gym and, and training and everything syncing up and linking together has been really cool. So we have two more days together. Uh, we're going to do some testing tomorrow, some lactate testing. We're also going to do some testing in the pool as well as a run. And then one final session on Thursday before she gets off. But it's been awesome so far. And I appreciate you guys following along.